regardless of why it was illegalized, it was illegal. I, I, I get it. It was illegal. I get it. You're a cop and I to- or an ex-cop, and I totally understand that because— I, I want to run down the street with naked. Okay, but that oh. that is that is frowned. Give that me is, a warning first. Ask you not to. That is frowned upon <laughs> yeah. in current society. As a matter of fact, it's illegal because you're exposing yourself to minors and stuff like now, that. Now, in 25 years from now, if they say it's okay to go outside naked, I'm a legacy streaker. This is gonna this hurt. Is gonna hurt. It's, time it's time for the, for the suffering, the suffering podcast. podcast. Have you ever gone into like a, a weed grow house? No. I mean, these guys are they're meticulous in what they do. They, with the lights and they know when and they got sprinkler systems on them. I mean, these guys are good. They are. And, and you know, that's a skill set. That's yeah. a skill set. And instead of punishing, because that was for years, now you take them and you say, you know what? We want you to teach the next generation and potentially grow some generational wealth instead of incarceration, generational wealth, you know, um, just we're trying to break the system that kept a people down to your point. It was looked at as a very easy way to keep black, brown people down. It was because if you pro, you know, white, white dudes were worried about the alcohol. They had their alcohol. It was the black, brown people. It was part of their culture. It was part of, you know, medicinally they used it. Well, that filtered, that filtered down. We just, we had a gentleman in here. His name's Seth Ferranti. Um, He, he wrote and produced, the documentary for Netflix called White Boy, White Boy, about Rick Wersch, who was the drug kingpin of Detroit. Um, now, Seth was the LSD kingpin of the country. He sold a lot of LSD, but he was also a big weed weed seller. But he was trying to make money to buy the weed because in order to get the good stuff, it was only sold, it was only grown or harvested in the fall. It was a whole thing to it. So he was caught with no drugs. There was a lot of LSD out there, and it was all his, and he admits yeah. it. He got a 25-year sentence. He did 21 years of it as a first-time nonviolent offender. Now, conversely to that, there's a guy who shot at me, tried to kill me with a gun. It was it was a legally owned gun, but he he he. I think he was. They were in the process of trying to take it away from him. He got six years. He did four. So Seth did 21 years for not getting caught with one drug as a first time nonviolent offender. A guy who tries to kill a cop gets six years, does four. So if I shoot at you, I could be out in four years. Yeah, go ahead. Give it a shot, man. Might I'll be say worth I didn't it. see anything. Diana, Diana, exactly. <laughs> Diana's going to come in and be my co-host. So, you know, that system that system is broken. But it it's is. A, but it, it did change. So what Seth had told us is is the inner cities, they were cracking down on minorities. And the, the judicial system said, well, this is a little racist. So then they started going after the white guys. And the white guys got incredibly – so it, it kind of evened itself out a little bit. The white guys got incredibly heavy sentences, heavy. They did pay the price for, for what you're talking about, and it did happen to yep. some extent. So the, the industry is changing a little bit. Is there any downsides to, that you have seen so far to the legalization? Uh, not yet. I think, you know, we're coming out of a stigma, stigmatized market. So there's, you know, conversations that are starting to be had. Um, I think if you're in the industry like I am and have been for years, then sometimes people like just assume that like "Ah, she's a stoner. No, you know, I was going to say, do you get those looks like from around town? Like that's, that's the weed girl, dude, like not even funny, but like when I first, cause I announced to the world everything, cause I'm just like an asshole that way. And so when I, and I get passionate about stuff and I, and I want to like share the information that I'm learning. So when I first announced, yes, there was a lot of judging and I can't make brownies and bring them to any social event without people just like, <laughs> Diana, give me your brownies. Give me your brownies. Yes, Diana, either. you do the signs. <laughs> you write up the signs of how much it costs. Do you want me we'll to bring food? No, thanks. Yeah. But, and it was funny because I either got such utter disappointment, like where I was like, dude, I'm sorry. They're mm-hmm. just brownies. Or the like, she brought brownies. I'm like, mm. they're just brownies. Like, and they you see really- the one guy in the corner scoffing down the brownies. But <laughs> yeah. th- there is one con that I, or actually this is a pro to the legalization. This is a pro. So our good friend, Charlie Cifarelli, you see his book there, 14th and 2nd. He just published that. His, um, uh, he, has, he has a friend that was sold some illegal mm-hmm. weed on the street that was laced. Yep. And put them in the hospital. Yep. So the pro of the legalization is, is that's gone. But is it cutting out the, I mean, you could probably buy, 
I don't even know what weed goes for on the street anymore. Illegal weed is always going to be much cheaper than yes. legal weed. Is it cutting out the poorer sections? Like, hey, weed is no longer in it's it's not for poor people anymore. It's for only for rich people. You, well, you you're going to have you're definitely going to have that. You're definitely going to have where certain people and this is one of the things that like in in California, for example, they started taxing it. They were to your point, like the politicians were like, yeah, we could make money on this. People are like coming in droves. Tourism picked up because people from other states were coming in. They started jacking up the taxes where the people who wanted to buy from a dispensary could no longer afford it, you know? And especially if you take a patient who like now relies on their medicine. So they went back to the legacy market. I was going to say, I don't think you'll ever get rid of the street dealer. The legacy market, meaning the illegal the legal, drug. The, the illegal, illegal drug. Yes, 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 yes. You know, um, and again, it was called the black market, but because we're, we're trying to undo the social equity portion, it's been renamed the legacy market. Um, oh, to wow. give, yeah. The drug dealers even get their own uh, their you know protected what? class. But here's, <laughs> you, okay, so we just had this conversation. You're calling them drug dealers. And yes, they, they dealt in drugs, but- it's what they knew. It's what they're good at. It's now a skill set that's looked for. Um, and they were, you know, they took the risk. They took the risk to keep this plant going. And now it's like, OK, let's not call them the black market anymore because there w there is a negative connotation. Like I see both sides to it. And let's call it legacy. Let's let's call it like this way. Maybe we'll we could invite them into the table, you know, and have but a again, legit business. But, I mean, you could pick their brain and figure out how they do it, but they were drug dealers. It, it, call it what you want. Call it black market. Call it pink market. They were drug dealers. Yes. They were, they were doing something illegal. You're, you're not wrong. Technically they were, but why was the plant, um, Pro, pro, uh, prohibition against in the first place. Well, they, like it's a complicated story. Because, they're not like, selling just weed for the, the, most of them, not all of them. Most of them were selling whatever they could get their hands on, and they're cutting the hell out of it. They're getting the Mexican no, brick stuff. No, no, and there's there's and no, I have to disagree with you because there's a lot that are just they all they they're so passionate about the flower they and the plant that that's all they're selling is because they take great pride in having the best product out there. They take pride in, you know, so it's not, you can't broad brush everyone that way because there are people in the legacy market who are trusted within their community because you know what? They've never sold anything laced. So their community, this is why we want them in the legit market. Their community already trusts them. What about, Johnny, who used to sell on the sell lids on the street corner, who was it was garbage weed. Is he somebody that they're looking for? No, um, or he's a bottom tier. He's he's you know like with anything else, yeah. it's like your product speaks for itself, right? right. Like so, you're going to be weeded out if you don't bring quality product. And some people <laughs> they're going to weed out the good ones. <laughs> but of a percentage, how many how many legacy dealers? Yep. How many of them do you think would be worthy to to get a top position in worthy the new market. And, and willing because now they're not going to make the same money going legit as they did government's going to take 30 some percent yeah exactly well some of them are willing to take that because they realize that they don't want to fall under the, that umbrella anymore and now this product that they're so passionate about they have the opportunity to sell legitimately and they're going after licenses you know and they're actually being put ahead of on the line, like in New Jersey, if you went to prison um, in New York, if you went to prison for cannabis, you're actually like deemed more worthy because it, it it's crazy that prohibition ever happened against cannabis. It's like if you look at the history of why it was, you know, criminalized, it, it it's insanity. I mean, like Kevin talked about that on your first episode. I mean, that 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 what 1938, that was a total absolute racist farce correct yeah the reason they yeah. illegalize it but regardless of why it was illegalized it was illegal i, I, I get it it was illegal i get it you're a cop and i told or an ex-cop and i totally understand that because uh, i want to run down the street with naked okay but that oh. that is that is frowned <laughs> give that me is, a warning we're first ask you not to <laughs> that is frowned upon <laughs> yeah. in current society as a matter of fact it's illegal because you're exposing yourself to minors and stuff like now, that. Now, in 25 years from now, if they say, 
it's okay to go outside naked. I'm a legacy streaker. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, now you take that same streaking and you take it to the south of France where naked beaches and it's just a naked body. And hairy women. It's, no, <laughs> it's just a, a naked body. That's all. Like, you know, in your head. But it's illegal. It's, it, my point where yes. I was going with that is I don't do it because it's illegal. And there's a lot of stuff yep. I don't do because it's illegal. Not because I think it's harmful. Not because I think it's bad. Because it's illegal. And listen, I'm not advocating streaking. But, like, <laughs> think about you're born naked, right? And then one day. I was fully some, clothed yeah. <laughs> when I was born. So, somewhere along civilization, they decided, you know what? You got to cover that junk up. You got to cover this up. You got to cover up that. Why do you have nipples and your nipples can show? My nipples can't show. Like, you ever think about that? Like, I I have nipples. Can you milk me? uh, Apparently, you just don't try hard enough. Okay. Yeah, that's a new. Oh, boy. (laughs) Mike, we're going to work on that. Here we go. Here comes comes another theory. (laughs) We're going to work on that. You know what? I want to test it. I actually. So that is apparently. Can we turn off the cameras for a minute, Drew? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> not here and now but but could you imagine like uh, like humanity if men could aid in that let me tell you as someone who breastfed i am all i accused for. bob of refusing to help i accused him I irrationally am, i am all for breaking that stigma hey you want to go to the beach and just the bottom go yeah. do your thing but but I'm you good. just said it why just the bottom like in some for some people Bottoms are optional too. Again, I'm not. Hey, if you one want of your cuckoo <laughs> hanging out, I'm good. Go to, go to Sandy Hook. Is that is that they the, got a nude beach down there? It's beach. not the south of France. So, no. did, no. did you ever go down to Sandy Hook? I did as a teenager, and the guard actually warned us. My girlfriend and I went, and we were like, "Oh, let's go see." And he stopped us, and he goes, "Girls, it's not the south of France, <laughs> and They're, it's not." Well, they they have volleyball nets set up, <laughs> and there's people playing volleyball. <laughs> Who should not be naked? It is. So you play volleyball down there? <laughs> well, listen, I'm half Irish. Nothing, nothing flapped when I was jumping up to get the ball. But it, I mean, it, it's something you should see. Uh, you know, I, I, the one thing I do know about nude beaches is most people who go to nude beaches should not go to nude beaches. You know, you follow me? Yeah. It's not something you want to see. But your your new company. Yes. High or high? Yes. I want to I want to get into that because okay. you're an advocate. And you're a brand manager, and I, I read, am. I read your, I read the profile, okay. and I, I, I know, well, I know you. Let's, yeah, yeah. let's, yeah, we yeah. know each other. Um, how are you advocating? How are you advocating for the cannabis industry? So one of my biggest things, first off, I want to, I want to give myself little props because I love the name that I chose because my stoner friends think it has to do with weed and getting high, so they're all for it. They're like, yeah, higher high. It actually is a financial term, which means you get a higher return on your investment. So, Google it and you'll see. I'm, t- I'm serious. Google high or high yes. and it's all financial stuff. It is all financial. Because that's exactly what I did. Yeah, I was yeah, looking, yeah. For, I was yeah, looking yeah. for That's why the arrow, the uh, financial. The arrow is like, yes. you know, the, yeah, the stock market the stock arrow. market arrow. Exactly. So I like to say that when you hire me, you get a higher return on your investment. Just because I was raised to be a hard worker and like, you know, um, <laughs> if I use your bathroom, I'm going to clean it like on my way out just because it's it's instilled in me. Leave a place nicer than you found it. So I started my firm a year ago this summer. Um, and you are the CEO. I am the CEO and founder. Um, and it's really funny because I was I'm first generation here in America. I'm the first one in my family to go to college. I'm the first for so many things. And I've had to rework my brain to not be an employee to be an entrepreneur. And it's a real hard shift because when you're an employee, your mindset is one way. When you're your own boss, you realize that like you have to bring opportunity and any opportunity is within your reach if you work hard enough. But being an employee, being a a boss. is exhausting. Having, yeah, but having been a prior employee, you could see where their, the holes are. Oh yeah, 100%. But you are the reason Diana McElroy, you are the reason why, for all of our faults in America, America is the greatest country in the world. And I am Thank a you. firm believer in that. And you prove that point. You are first generation American. All yep. right. You are a female owned business. You take you took the bull by the horns and you started this scary venture. Of You're yours. gonna make me cry. <laughs> it's the truth. And yeah. that is no, listen, I'll bring it right back to you. Don't, don't I, you worry about it. I am I'm gearing up. So convinced especially now, I've, I've always been convinced, this is why America is the greatest country in the world, because 
you took that opportunity, you seized it. And I know you're doing great things because I do follow you. Yep. I follow all the stuff that you do. Yeah. So I'm trying to bring education. I'm trying to bring enlightenment. I'm trying to bring opportunity. I'm trying to bring people to the conversation that like normally wouldn't talk about cannabis. You know, that's that's my mission within Higher High is just there's opportunities to be had. Let's have an honest conversation on the opportunities because to my point before, you know, people hear green brush and they think they're going to be growing money off of trees. No, it's hard. Like you have to figure out your, your angle within this industry, you know? And once again, it's, I feel like black and brown people are taken advantage of because they're like, Oh, weed. No, 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 no. Don't, do not mortgage your house. Do not think, you know, it takes $2 million to open a dispensary. Like, do you really have that capital? Do you really have what are you already doing? Pivot what you're doing already. You use gold rush as a term. Yeah. So in the 49 gold, 1849 gold rush out in San Francisco, do you know at Sutter's, Sutter's Farm? What, yeah. Do you know who made the most money during that gold rush? Probably the people selling lumber. People selling dry goods. Oh, yeah. Dry goods, pans, shovels, and food. Yeah. Did you ever watch what, uh, Deadwood? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So it was the people sustaining the town of people going out to explore for Absolutely. the gold. Yes. Absolutely. 110%. There that... was, there was one guy and I can't remember his name. His name escapes me, but the one guy he, he found or he heard that gold was, and he got it out in the newspapers and before yep. he let it out, he bought all the supplies and opened up his own general store. He made the most money. So opportunity in the cannabis business is not necessarily selling the plant, the no. flower, or the product. Do you know who made the most money right off the bat? Real estate agents. For shops? For everything. Yeah. For everything. They understand if you're a real estate agent or or were, because now it's like the opportunities are, are shrinking, though there still are a lot of municipalities that have opted out, a lot of municipalities. If you understand what where a good location is for a cultivation site or a dispensary and you have the capital behind you, you are buying up those spots and you're holding on to them because the value is just going to, you know, I, I, I heard a quote that most. Um, Was it the producers of podcasts make more money than the podcasters? Do they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <no kidding. laughs> Andrew drives yeah. a bigger car than I do. It's, I know yeah. that. it's the service industry. It is. It is. It is. It's, you know, it's like they, if, if I had known, if I could rewind, if I had known you know, 20 years ago that cannabis and I had a crystal ball, I would have bought up certain buildings because right. now I understand which buildings work but best. You had to go through the suffering of the entry level into the cannabis business yes. to learn what you know now. And now you're in a position to pass that information on to others. Not only that, but I also um, tutor them in don't let anyone tell you just because you don't have cannabis experience in most like I didn't have cannabis experience. So I was told that like your value is very low because you don't have cannabis experience. I built an entire department in New Jersey and the industry watched me build it. But yet I had no cannabis experience because I'm not stupid. I learned what I needed to learn. You know, like I took information. I stayed up at night. I, I read every article that I could and I still consume every article I can just to understand if I see that there's a podcast or a webinar on cannabis, I'm on it because there might be one word that I didn't have in my repertoire, you know? But I mean, I could go for almost any business. Like Kevin was talking, he was in car sales before, yep. you know? And sucked at it, apparently. <laughs> I was actually quite good at it. That's really? why he's not here. That's why he's not <laughs> yeah. doing it. No, but you, you got to learn all about those cars in order to yep. sell them. Yes. And, and all if about... You're, if you're good at it, if you're really passionate and good at it, and going to be good and at it. And all about the other brands of cars that are similar to that. So you for could comparison. refute anything. Yep. Yeah. And that yeah. they Comparison were the success. Purpose. They were the successful ones. And car sales, much like the cannabis industry, you're going to get some people in there and they're going to try to wing it. Yep. And they're going to fail. Yep. Or you can be a true professional like you are. You can be a true professional, consume all of that information and become educated. Somebody once told me, and this was one of my favorite quotes is if you're not reading about your industry every single day, then you're not a true professional. A hundred percent because then, or you're not passionate about it. Like you have no passion, you know? Um, that's where I think I came in and I fully own this. I came in seeing a potential for an, in, a new industry 
And then I became passionate. The more I learned about it, the more I was like, wow, it's really helping people. Like, wow, you know, that that child that suffers from cancer, like it's it's actually a medication that's working. So I became like an, an advocate on my own through, you know, my own. I exposed myself to it. And then the world brought me like evidence, you know, um, information. Uh, and I try to, I try to project that back out to the world. So one, one word I want to bring up and I, this can't be a long discussion, but I just need to hear. Okay. Gateway. Um, cause everybody says it. Marijuana is the gateway so for me, drug. I to... just said it. It was the gateway to smoking cigarettes. Um, and no, no. But <laughs> is, is it a gateway to, you know, stronger drugs? Whether if I get high I'm, from this, can I get higher from something no. else? And, and that's where I, I 100%, it's actually used to get people off of opioids. It's actually used to get people off of addiction of like much stronger drugs because it takes the edge off and it just allows your body. Listen, cannabis is a natural plant. In its natural form, it is a plant. We have every every uh, mammal has an endocannabinoid system, which was just discovered like 20 years ago. And cannabinoids. Can- that doesn't sound like a right. That sounds dirty. It's no. a, that's a Polish word she just made up. <laughs> I, kicked, I kicked him right in the cannabinoids. <laughs> and that's what uh, cannabis has cannabinoids. And so it's like a lock and key mechanism where you, you, if you smoke cannabis, it just unlocks. Th- that's why I've, I personally have benefited so much from it. You know, like physically, if I. I, I can't even tell you, you know, you start, you, I'm turning 50 this year. Things are just a little bit like, ow, ow, creakier. Been there, done it. Yeah. Well. 56 now. So. But I could drop it like I'm 20 because of cannabis. And I mean that, like, because of cannabis, like I am able to maintain a healthier lifestyle, you know, weight loss, cannabis. There's a study that's coming out that. Cannabis can help with weight loss. So then the, munch, the munchies is a different, I mean, that's, that's a, a different strain. That, that's, that's a, a different yeah. strain. And you, it is, it is a dosing journey. Like I will not lie. There are some strains that I do find myself a little bit more peckish, but I'm also very disciplined. So I will set myself up for success in the house and be like, you know what? I'm not going to keep the ooey gooey cake. that Doritos. Just get the Doritos out. Oh, see, no. See, that's where you make the money in the cannabis industry is selling Doritos. <laughs> Diana, where can we- Buy where stock in Doritos. Yes. Lays. <laughs> where can we find you? You could find me on LinkedIn under okay. the Diana McElroy. Uh, LinkedIn, by the way, for anyone looking to get into cannabis, I always tell people that is where the adults are because it, it is cannabis friendly. So that's where you could network with people. Um, Instagram is great, but it's really- Showing pictures of how much you're smoking. Yes. But yes. Link- LinkedIn isn't really like a, a social media thing, you know, like Instagram is social media. And LinkedIn Facebook was started as a business. Yeah. It is. It's a business. It's a form. business networking. It is a business networking, but in cannabis, it's not. In cannabis, we've kind of taken it over as it's social media, it's educational, it's um, informative. It, you know, people put out. That's where I did a lot of my education came from is someone would post an article or a study or, you know, a paper on cannabis. And I was like absorbing it. And I learned which people to follow because they were putting out relevant information. So, um, so LinkedIn, LinkedIn, LinkedIn is the, is where it, we, we LinkedIn or higher underscore high underscore Diana is on Instagram. If you want to follow, well, we'll you know. put, we'll put those links in yep. our show notes. Perfect. You know, Diana, we're coming to the end of this thing. Yep. And, and we always like to find out what you're suffering within the cannabis industry has taught you. Oh boy. It's not to undervalue myself ever again, um, which I did because I didn't have cannabis experience. And I will say cannabis has been the only industry where I was written up for asking too many questions because, and I bowed down to misogyny and I wish I hadn't. So that was my biggest suffering. I was going to say that that's going to be tough. Is the, is it Primarily male-dominated field? Very much so. Very much so. And I... So you had to run into that and fight that. Fight that. Jump that and, hurdle. And, you know, and it's funny because I undervalued myself and I kept my myself smaller because I wanted to be in the industry so bad and I no longer do. And now I have a voice and I very much use it. Yeah. I, I think the reason you did that, and I'll go back to it, is 
your Polish background. Yeah. Polish people are the strongest people I've ever met. My We're life. stubborn as anything. We're stubborn as anything. Ivan Putski, yeah. remember Polish power? Oh, Polish power, absolutely. Polish power. used to come up yeah. like, you know, yeah, yeah. it is. Diana, thank you so much for joining us. Thank again. you so much for inviting me. I really do appreciate all the discussions we have are, are amazing. Well, well, the, Diana I mean, and I talk on the phone and we, it's always a, it, it's like if, Picasso made a painting of a conversation and that's the conversation between Diana and I. It's everywhere. Yes, it's it everywhere. is. It is. But we're, because we're not afraid to touch on any subject. No, and, and that's what, I mean, it's enlightening. You yes. know, you're, you're, tell, you're talking to two former cops telling us how good cannabis could be for you. When yep. you and thank you for being for open to the conversation mm -hmm. because that's part of the taking away the stigma. And well, yeah. that, that's the problem with the country now is everybody's set in their own way and they don't want to hear oh, anybody else's. We opinion. have to learn yeah. how to disagree. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And the European in me likes those conversations. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And uh, we look forward to seeing where you're going to go in the future. Um, because if cannabis is here now, I mean, look at all the other things that the jumping off point. I know uh, one of the foundations we work with, the ASM Foundation, is using uh, microdoses of psilocybin yeah. for combating pts with regrowing synapses you got yeah. ayahuasca you got ibogaine you got ketamine shots all these previously scheduled two narcotics are coming back into play and showing some benefits so i'm looking forward to where the cannabis industry is going same thing all right and that's going to do it for this episode of the suffering podcast but before we go we always think about what we learned today you find a career in the strangest place overindulgence is still overindulgence education will erase a stigma don't undervalue yourself, but most importantly, take the bull by the horns. That's going to do it for this episode of The Suffering Podcast, The Suffering of Cannabis with Diana McElroy. Follow uh, Mike on Instagram at Mike underscore Falace. Follow me at Real Kevin Donaldson. Of course, follow The Suffering Podcast. And we're going to see you on the next episode of The Suffering Podcast. <laughs>